time for some new tomato steaks for the garden. And um, you can see my old ones. They were cut out of an old cottonwood tree that came down a couple of years ago. And um, they're all just so warped now. You can't pound them in the ground. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to do a little better job of pointing the new ones. So um, I decided to order one of these lumberjack tool pointers. Um, they had a giant sale on over Memorial Day weekend that they were like 40% off the price of them. So, um... I've always wanted one and I decided to give it a try. So, you know, this is what it was. It came in a couple days later after I ordered it. I had it. And, um, you know, it's just basically a really nice machined aluminum head there and some blades that go with it. I uh, took it down to my shop and, uh, you know, thought I'd put it together. First thing I did is I uh, built a little gauge for um, putting the blades in. Now, they say you can use one of the blades against the other blades to, um, to put them in, but... I had a piece of uh, thin uh, aluminum that was a little bit thinner than the blade and um, decided to put some UHMW strips on it so I could push the blades into it, not worry about dulling them or anything. So it's it's actually only a couple thousand thicker than the um, blades were. And uh, I figured, you know, this would help protect the blades a little bit when I put them together. So it would be my little gauge that stayed with it because I'm going to be, you know, using this long term. So... And then another thing in the instructions they had, um, for smoother stakes, you could put washers underneath the, the blades. So I decided to, um, that I was going to try that. And I got two different quarter inch washers. I got a thicker one and a thinner one I was going to try. So, um, first thing I did is the blades were ground, but they weren't really, um, you know, really super sharp so I just took them and I've got this little diamond stone that I you know like to hit blades on and so I just took them and ran them over the diamond stone a couple times until I you know basically got rid of all those little grinding marks in there and just got a you know pretty much real sharp blade on it and then it was time to put the blades in and I, it was a little bit tricky trying to get the washers under the blades and like I said I started with the thicker washers that I had and so you know it's just a matter of trying to line the washers up with the threaded hole there and get everything in line and then put the um, those little button head cap screws in place that hold the blades and um, you know really the machining on this and everything was really high quality it's really nice you know nice looking piece of equipment and then I just took my gauge there and you know that way I could push the blade up against it and um, not worry about nicking it or anything so you just put your gauge in there and, and hold everything square and tighten up the screws and you know that's it from what they say so uh, you know it's, it's really a pretty simple job putting this together and you know being able to swap out the blades and sharpen them later and stuff I think so um, you know so that was one side there all put together and you just slip out the gauge and uh, um, then it's just you know one more blade that goes on the other side same thing I put the you know the same thickness washers in here and got everything lined up and and screwed together Um, you know, I'm real excited just to see how this thing works. I've always always wanted one of these tools, and it just takes so long to cut the uh, points on a bandsaw. And then they still they dry if they hit a rock or something, it twists the stakes and everything. So I thought this would be a much better solution. And um, someday I'm hoping to make an automated machine out of it too. So there it is. I got the second blade lined up, and you know, it's just a matter of. Um, holding it up against that little gauge block and tightening the screw heads there. Um, you do get a little tiny bit of shift in the blade when you tighten the screws. It tries to move a little bit, but you know, it's really not that bad. Then there's this arbor on there that you can remove later, which what I plan on doing when I save up and get some money to buy. They have a motor adapter that you can buy, so um, someday I'll get that. But um, for the meantime, I've got this old Sioux drill that my father owned um it's probably from the 1950s or earlier um it's just you know a really old thing it turns 650 rpm so i decided to give that a try because you know that's basically in the rpm range i called for so um this thing uh you know basically it, it chucks right in there to 
just uh you know it's got a nice hex on the shaft so it won't slip or anything and um just put it in the drill tighten it up and the trick that my father used to do is he always wrapped the drill chuck onto the cord with a piece of electrical tape and one thing I can tell you, this drill is not safe to use outdoors. When I was younger, I tried, um, it's got equal size plugs in it. And uh, when I was younger, I tried running an extension cord outdoors on a damp day and using it. And got the shock of my life. So uh, these old drills are not that safe. So there it is. You know, everything turned smoothly and everything. So I just had some wood in my shop I decided to uh, play around with and you know see what how this thing worked so uh, first that's a piece of one inch square hard maple that I decided to try and um, you know I just had it clamped on it's a little uh, workmate that would move around if I pushed too hard so you know, I couldn't put a lot of force on it but um, the uh, the cutter really cut nice and um, the biggest uh, there it is you get these really nice little shavings out of it um, but it did a, it did a wonderful job of putting the point on. The biggest problem is I was not holding the drill directly in line with the stake, as you can see. I think this is going to take a little practice, but, you know, someday I plan on building an automated machine and stuff. Then I took a piece of half inch square maple that I tried, and, um, that, doing it the way I'm doing it just seemed too small to use with this, um, you know, with a drill. If once I make a machine where everything will be lined up, it should be easy to do. But, um, you know, basically it was hard because everything bounced around and stuff. So, you know, a half inch is basically a little little small for it. Um, then I had a piece of three quarters ash I decided to try. Um, you know, basically my next stakes I'm going to be making will be made from ash. So I wanted to see how the ash would work. And... Uh, there it is. It did a, a really nice job. Um, you know, very little tear out. And then again, you can see how I had to drill crooked when I, you know, put it on there. So I'm going to have to, you know, get better with my drill or make a jig to line everything up. Then I had a piece of like pine dowel that was one and three eighths diameter. I just decided to, you know, try for the heck of it to see what that would work like. And um, that cut really, really super easy. Um, and that also did a real good job but the same thing um poor alignment on my part so it was off center there like that but it did a you know it did a wonderful job on it and um get all these really nice chips that um someday i think i'm going to use them for fire starter all right then i had a little bit over inch and a half square block of cherry in my shop that i decided to try because um that's about the size i'm going to cut the stakes when i make them and you can see that this is really going pretty slow um, cutting. It takes it takes a while because I really can't put a lot of pressure on it. You can see the whole bench moves if I start pushing on it. But, um, you know, it, it, it's cutting a little bit slow, but it's cutting really nice. Um, it's not really getting to drill that much or anything. So, you know, this, this one's taking a little bit of time, but... I think um, once I get it mounted to something where I put a little force on it, you know, it should rip right through it. So there's the um, the cherry steak. And that one is the limit of this tool. They say you can do um, up to like inch and a half square or anything that's diag. It could be a rectangle as long as it's under two inches diagonal. Uh, so there it is on a cherry. And boy, that put a beautiful thing on there you can see where i had a little bit of alignment problem on the blades i'm gonna have to you know work on that a little bit better but you know that just did a, a beautiful job um of pointing that cherry so you know I, if it it really um met my expectations it looks like and uh it seems to uh you know the blade adjustment i'm gonna have to play with that a little bit to get things lined up perfectly but um it does a beautiful job at staking and I'm going to have a bunch of good fire starter once I, you know, do a couple hundred stakes. So now that I use those thicker washers, I decided to go back and put in a couple of um, thinner, the washers that are real thin to try. Um, they're like less than half the thickness of the ones that I use. So I just went back through and took out, the, you, there you can see, there, there may be a third of the thickness of the ones that I used. 
Um, so, you know, it's just a matter of going back through and just swapping out the washers under the blades and, um, you know, reinstalling the, the screws and tightening everything up. And, you know, I thought I'd give it a, a go and see what happens. So here's that uh, inch and a half square cherry. And you can see it's really just chewing right through it. Um, it's like probably cutting six times as fast. Um, it it's hard with a hand drill though to to tell exactly what's going on because you move around a little bit and stuff but um there you can see it it did a quick job on it but it's just not a pretty job on uh, there's some tear out and stuff like that but i think some of that may be caused by me bouncing around and you know once i get it on a motor it'll probably be better but you know that there's a side that with a thick washer and there's a thin washer and you know it definitely did make a difference in the speed um so i decided to go back and try that piece of pine that i had the dowel and that just cut like butter but um it cut so fast that it was kind of hard to stop the drill from shaking and uh, i think you know that may be part of the problem uh there you can see it it did get some tear out and from the blade and on the softer wood it it did get a point on it but it's just not as pretty so, um, you know, I think that from looking at it, that playing with the, uh, the little bit adjustments on this blade can make a big difference in uh, the quality of your stakes, like they said, and the speed. And I think once I get this mounted on a motor, you know, someday in the future, it's going to be a lot easier to control everything. But there's a three-quarter inch um, ash one, and you can see that's got some tear out on it, too. It's not, you know, pretty and smooth like the original one with the uh, thicker washers but you know it's all controllable from uh, from the looks of it so you know all in all it um i think it's gonna work out great and i got like a gotta get my sawmill out i'm waiting for the rain to stop again and uh, cut another batch of uh, tomato steaks so you know i'm gonna give this a good workout and you know i'll let you see how it works out in the future but um you know, for my first impressions here, it really looks like it's going to do a good job. And um, it's a real simple to use tool that I should have bought years ago. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.